about that. I, I, I think that um, my next guest is possibly one of those individuals that knows Tata better than anybody else as well, having worked with him side by side. Uh, the very first Speaker of Parliament in the Democratic South Africa, I'm now joined by Freni Janwala, who we're still calling Madam Speaker till this day. It's so lovely to have you on Morning Live and welcome to the special day. Oh, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here on a day like this and get a new ID. <laughs> I know. What does it feel like to get a new ID? Well, uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy the thought of it, you know, and I, the fact that it now is internationally recognized is going to make it easier when I travel. Yeah. Yeah. Which, it, which it is. And I mean, on a momentous occasion like this, you know, where we've spoken about South Africans who are still in desperate need to get IDs. You know, this is this is perhaps the move in the right direction where we'll be able to sort that out. Yeah. And also the, you know, technology's moved now. So uh, it's easier to produce. It's easier to identify people. Do you feel that this is a fitting way to to celebrate Madiba and his life and what he stood for? I think any step we take forward is a contribution to pay tribute to the negotiations and the changes we made. So it's not the specific step. Yes, I think he will be delighted yeah. to receive it. Yes. Yeah. He'll probably pass a comment or two about it, or he won't <laughs> not look at it. but I'm sure he'll be delighted. Having said that, I can imagine through your career and times working with him as Speaker of Parliament, there were a couple of comments passed all the time. Was he difficult? Was he easy? What was he like? No, he was. He had a tremendous respect for Parliament right before even I became Speaker. He wanted us to run Parliament the way we ran the negotiations, which was inclusive. So unlike every other country, you will see that in the first pictures of our Parliament, we had every leader of every political party in the front bench. You see, so the ANC gave up their benches and we put them there. But that was arising from his decision that we had to run it the way we ran negotiations, inclusive, bring people in. He would come and sit there often, but he would always send me a note. He could have spoken any time. He would send me a note and say, please, Madam Speaker, may I speak? So, I mean, that was the way he responded because it was an institution he saw was very important. Yeah. I, I'm sure through his tenure, a lot of people didn't understand him. They didn't understand that, um, that, that ability to want to reconcile, that ability to have opposition parties sitting in the front row. I, I'm sure he encountered a lot of opposition. Probably, but when I first proposed that, you know, because he just said, do it the way we did negotiations, yeah. which meant we didn't worry about with what size each party was. You were all part of that negotiation, of CODESA, you know, and the Constituent Assembly. So it was a, the most obvious way. So every South African, if they, we went on TV, they could look at Parliament and they would say, ah, there's my leader. That's my parliament. We had to get buy-in from the entire population. So whether it was a supporter of Constant Falun or of President Mandib, uh, Mandela, everybody could see their leaders sitting there and therefore identify with what was a totally new institution. And feel included in the new South Africa that it was. Let you were there for 10 years um, when, you, when you finished serving as Speaker and, and, um, and Madiba also finished his term in office. And in the latter years, were, were you still friends? Did you see him often? Yeah, I used to go and see him. He wanted to be briefed. He would want to know what I was up to, as he would put it. Yes. <laughs> and he'd remember. You know, I would see him and say, look, I'm sitting on this commission. This is what I'm doing and so on and so forth. Yeah. The idea was that, and even now it is, that one keeps him stimulated. You know, one of the big fears was, uh, but there was never a possibility he was not going to be stimulated. <laughs> that, that's a fact. I imagine a man with so much in his mind and so much uh, to want to give to the rest of the country to suddenly not do anything, it was impossible. So he saw a lot of people. The foundation's attitude was, don't go and ask him to do something because too many people were doing that and being such a nice man he would agree yes, of course. but just reporting to him and he would remember he would remember saying you know last time you came here and that could have been three years ago 
said, you told me you were doing this at the UN. Tell me what's happened since then. It's amazing. It's amazing memory. What are you doing at the moment? Well, I'm trying to cut down on the travel. <laughs> I sit on the advisory committee for human security for the United Nations. Uh, I do a number of odd jobs like that where I'm interested and can set my agenda. You're an amazing woman and a role model for all of us. Thank you so much for talking to us and congratulations on your, on your new ID. I hope you enjoyed and, and, and travel locally. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much too. Thank, Thank you. you. Very, very much. Now that was uh, Madam Speaker Frini Janwali talking to us ahead of just uh, uh, receiving a little bit earlier this morning her new smart ID card. Let's go back to the...